Hi, I'm Ravali, and I've got a question for you. Have you ever been aware of a goal, a path you want to take in life, only something stopping you from pursuing your desired path? So you're going in a direction that, let's just say, it doesn't feel fantastic in your heart. Well, if you don't pay attention to those desires coming at you, where do you think they're coming from? They're coming from you. They're coming from your spirit. What are they? They're your purpose. They're the reason you're here in this lifetime. At least one aspect of the reason. Because as we get older in the world, changes in our lives change. We kind of alter that path, at least to a little degree. So how do I know all this stuff? Well, when I was raising my kids, and my mom lived near us also, so I was taking care of two performing kids, and my mom, whenever I could squeeze her in, if you've ever raised professional kids, you're never, ever at home. Your schedule's never, ever your own because that's also a volunteer everywhere. And I thought, well, I had this goal I wanted to pursue in life, right? Only I didn't get to do those things. I got to write lots of music because it worked with where my kids were in their lives. I got to go lots of places, learn all the highways, do all that driving without stressing. On the subject of highways, I considered every time I had an appointment to nourish my spirit and something came up and it was usually this kid needs an audition there. And I get to miss, I get to miss. I unfortunately missed some really important events in my life I wanted to go to. So what did I do? I called them detours on my path. I wanted to go this way, only I had to go a little bit that way first. Then I tried to come back and I had to go a little bit more that way and I had to come back and I had to go a whole lot more that way. For a long time, because I spent my whole life counseling people, I thought I wanted to get a doctorate in psychology. So that's what I was pursuing. I remember my professor when I was looking at doctoral programs, basically saying, are you nuts? Why do you want to work with a chronically mentally ill instead of sitting in a nice cushy office and just chatting with people who have neurotic issues that it's not like they're life-threatening, so they could be happier so they could be healthier. But it wasn't stuff where they didn't know how to cope. And I wanted to work with a chronically mentally ill. And that's what I did. And I had a fabulous time doing it. And after some years, my mom lost her ability to have her mental functioning so that she was in our world. She had all the symptoms of schizophrenia. She'd see things that nobody else could see and just a whole lot of terrifying stuff going on. And it happened because I was in the world I was in with a chronically mentally ill. I knew all the people, all the places to go to get her help. So you see, there are never accidents. I was able to take really good care of her because I know the who and I knew the where and I knew the what. So I was going along and I was working in crisis care. Why did I want to go into crisis care? At one point, I had volunteered on a hotline. Who calls on the hotline? People who have challenges and they don't know what to do. And I remember, this probably, <clears throat> this probably motivated me more than anything else to go into crisis care. Somebody called one night 
and said, I'm just calling to say goodbye because I'm going to kill myself now and hung up the phone. Now, the person wasn't on the line long enough to trace the call. I don't know who it was. I couldn't take any action that would help the person. But the action I took was moving into working in crisis care. So I was working in crisis care. I was working for a county facility. What did that mean? It meant mainstream psychology. Well, if you know me, and if you've been with me for a while, you know, I don't do anything mainstream. So when I would work with people, I'd close the door so we'd have privacy. I remember one day being out in public with a client, a resident, and I don't remember what caused it, but I just spontaneously hugged her. You know, we all need more hugs. You know, Virginia Satir, who founded Family Therapy, said, you need four hugs a day just to get by. You need eight to be okay. You need 12 hugs a day to thrive. And I was just giving her that one. I knew darn well I always wanted to hug my clients because it's that touch. Just look at the healthiest, happiest people in the world. They're people in loving relationships. So anyway, I always worked with closed door when I was working with a woman with a client. And one night, one of the clients went bananas throwing dangerous, throwing stuff around the place. And I went in and I got her and I brought her into the room. I closed the door behind me. And what I didn't know was she didn't sit down where I told her to sit, where she usually did when I told her to. I turned around and there she was right in my face with her hand coming down about to slam me. And it came down and it came down. And she was huge. I could easily have been killed that night, but, but I knew I was responsible for everyone in the facility. I knew it was a neighborhood facility. I knew if something happened to me, she'd go out the door and possibly harm the neighbors. So I made it through and I stood up to her and eventually got help. Took 43 minutes for the police to come because when the first one showed up, this is how big she was. They kept calling for backup and backup and backup. There were 11 big husky police officers there before they approached her to take her in the paddy wagon. She wouldn't fit in the car. What was that all about for me in my life? For a long, long time, I knew that wasn't a good place for me to work. I knew I couldn't work the way my heart and my spirit were telling me to work. And I knew if I couldn't, then I couldn't give these people the kind of understanding and direction that might actually change their worlds. There was a reason they were called the chronically mentally ill. It was a situation that seemed to be never ending. I didn't take actions to leave there and I was getting a lot of messages. I had three different organizations, uh, a chiropractor who was a kinesiologist told me, you go get your degree because you knew I was working on my doctorate and you can work with me. The director of the women's center, she said, go ahead, open up a satellite office. You run that office and we'll hire you. But the one that I really, really wished for, I thought I never could get it, was the person who really awakened me to the spiritual world. And, oh, I wished I could work with him and I knew he worked alone. And then one day in the summer, I got a call and he said, Somebody left me an office building. Would you come and practice in the same place with me? So be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. But the thing was, I said no. 
it was an hour and a half drive to get to where he was. I didn't want to deal with the kind of traffic it took to get there. But the universe kept offering, kept offering. I call them the whispers that I was ignoring. What's going on in your life? What whispers are you ignoring? Because when you ignore them, the universe has to get loud. And boy, you know it got really loud when it slammed me and took me out. It took three years to recover from that brain injury. It was a pretty bad one. But it sure did wake me up. It took me in to the whole spiritual realm that I had only seen in bits and pieces. It took me here so where I would pursue my desire to be a metaphysical minister. So what in your world might you be ignoring whispers? What in your world would you really, really like to be doing every day to make a difference in your own life first and then in the lives of others? And that reminds me, if you are looking for something that can help your brain, your heart, your health, your ability to heal from wounds, from injuries, to stop pain, to just have your body function like it did when you're like 20 years old, 30 years old, full of energy, sleeping well, bounding and able to do whatever you wanted because your body was all in with you. If you're not there, go ahead, contact me. I'll have a chat with you and we'll get you on path to get there. Because if you knew me 12 years ago, after the brain injury took out a whole lot of my key functioning, you know I couldn't do something like this. I just ain't never be able to do this when I'm doing it. So my point is, don't give up hope. Contact me. Okay. Now, you may notice I'm an environment letting you see my background. I'm an artist. People know I love art. And though I don't have most of my paintings or sculptures on display, I have some. And there's one in particular that I want to share with you. This here. Am I pointing to it? I'm trying. <laughs> This. Oh, there you go. What is it? If you can tell me what it is, and I screen all comments before I upload them. So every single person who tells me an accurate answer for what that is, I will invite you to a private video chat with me and we'll have a good time talking about what you want to talk about. I thank you so much for joining me here today. I am Reverend Ellie Beam, and this is Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. And I invite you to join our Facebook group because you can get some extras in there and make a friend, ask questions. Let us know, what do you want to know about? Going over to our show site where you can watch or listen to any of our episodes and you get to leave a review there. What happens when you leave a review? People who are like you, who are looking for the same kind of spiritual growth, awakening, forward movement, different way of being they'll see your review and they'll know oh that's what i'm looking for and they will follow the show and be able to expand their spiritual comfort audible has a special offer for you when you follow my link you get a free 30-day trial go through the site Download the audiobook of your choice and look around because Audible's full of stuff, not just audiobooks, everything on Audible. 
You don't even go find it anyplace else most of it. Remember to enjoy every moment that's capital I N in capital J O Y joy. You're here to love and enjoy life, and your world happens within and only within. I look forward to seeing you next time.